Hello and welcome to the Surf Plus Geek Podcast. I'm Jake and today I have a guest all the way from across the world. It's Brittany. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's going all right. It's early here, so it's going... The sun is rising, so... Yeah, you're a crazy <laughs> person day. for doing this so early in the morning. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to say that. I am not a morning person, by it yet, as you just found out. I'm not a morning person, but I guess... <laughs> they force you to be a morning person in the Army. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah. That didn't work out for me that well. I just didn't sleep when I had drill. Um, <sighs> yeah, yeah. It was it was fun. I, I can tell you, I, your, your experience is probably very different from mine and being in the Guard, because the Guard is just... Uh, it's very different. I mean, there was a time mm -hmm. when my armory didn't have bathrooms. We had to use porta potties outside and stuff, and it was like February, and it was like two degrees outside. <laughs> so, anyways, that's a different oh, story. Uh, so, uh, what's like the basics are? Who are you? Because you know, you know, I don't know how. Like, how uh, big do we want this answer? No, I'm just kidding. I'm Brittany. My name's Brittany. I'm a specialist in the army. Um, I am older than your normal specialist so i've i lived a lot before i joined the army i was working on cruise ships and uh, i have an undergrad in uh, music so i was working as a performer for more years than i care to disclose <laughs> um yeah so that's who i am i'm also you know more over over like arching who i am I'm like a musician nerd <laughs> like gaming i'm newer to gaming but like uh i like the community for like my friends that are in it and it's a really cool way i was always into dungeons and dragons and and magic and then mo more recently my uh, my friend was like you should start playing like online games because you can hang out with your friends that are far away and like you're in korea and uh because i was bemoaning not having like <laughs> being able to play dungeons and dragons because no one will <laughs> have a campaign <laughs> in the middle of the night or the you know like the timing never worked out yeah that makes so, i was gonna say yeah you could do by the, the fiance does D, D over over zoom because they were doing it because of covid and stuff and then i was like the time difference would be a problem yeah i could see that right. being the issue <laughs> we so, tried uh, i <laughs> i was oh yeah you <laughs> tried yeah <laughs> never but, never worked out that's i it's understandable like you said that time zones uh it's funny um but so yeah, I was when I did a little research into you because it, you kind of have to research guests because otherwise, you know, you never know who you're having on. Uh, I found it interesting that uh, that you have a pretty cool like you did a lot before you joined the, the army. I mean, I did. <laughs> I knew that you were probably I knew you had probably had college because you went in as a specialist. I figured that's how that would yeah because I noticed that you probably were in for about a year around a year. So usually. When people go in as a specialist, for anyone that doesn't know, you can go in as a specialist if you have a college degree. You can jump ahead. Um, I don't, you know, something that if you're if you're interested in joining the army, there's an option for you if you have college. Um, yeah, or or you know, like if you don't want to go into the band field and you have a college degree, you should be an officer. Well, don't be enlisted if you can be an officer. I mean, you know, as an enlisted, <laughs> I, I I can't say that I want more officers. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I. Coming from an infantry background, officers, eh, no, we actually had some great officers. We had this one Russian guy who, I don't even remember his, his last name, but he was great. He was, uh, he was, he one day said, he was just this crazy physical guy. He, just crazy physically and fit guy. But one day he goes, you know, he's like, infantry, just road bump for Russians. And we're like, oh, that's confidence inducing. So, yeah, uh. Great game. He was Russian, so I was like, I, what do you know that we don't know, sir? Yes, uh, why are you telling us this? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, oh. no, National Guard, we, we'll be good. Um, so, yeah, so uh, what made you decide to do the thing that is the Army? <laughs> um, I don't know. No, I, I, it actually hadn't occurred to me. I, the first time it ever came up, my uh, my dad was in the army for 32 years. So like I, I come from an army background and we have a, a lot of uh, army friends, obviously family friends. And I was, I was in Canada actually uh, uh, bemoaning, like working on cruise ships and kind of bemoaning the way the contract system works is like, you'll finish a contract and you might not have your next job lined up. And I was talking to my mom and I was like, I just, 
I'm tired of waiting tables and I'm tired of not knowing like when my next job is and you know blah 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 and she was like you know our friend is a recruiter and he says you should join the band I was like hold up they have singers in the band (laughs) um so I was like great very interested (laughs) let's look into it and that like I applied and I didn't hear like back really It, it kind of I think it just ended up on a desk you know how things happen yeah and i you know in the in the performing industry if you don't hear back that means no so i was like okay well i didn't get it that's fine um but then so i got another cruise ship contract and <laughs> covid happened and it, they sent us home like they were like well uh this person i'm sorry my phone's buzzing that's yeah, all right um they sent they sent us home and I was like, well, I'm just gonna go stay like I can't go back to New York and right now in the middle of COVID and I had someone in my apartment uh subletting. So I went home to my parents and my mother was like, Please just email Raphael. Like it's different in the army. Just please, just send the email. So I'm home, I don't have anything to do, you know, collecting unemployment, living with my parents, and I was like, Okay. So I emailed him and he was like, Oh, yeah, let me look into that. And like within the next day, I think they were like, oh yeah, we're moving forward. If you could just like, we're going to schedule all this. We need to send you to maps and like, you have to do a bigger audition and stuff. But like, it went so fast at that point. And I was like, okay, well I have work. Um, and you know, like there's also like the family having had army background, like great so this is cool like it's like a legacy kind of thing and i'm also going to be able to be a singer and very you know like a cool cool new experience in life so then i I was in basic training and i was like what did i do (laughs) so so they actually had you audition that's i didn't that's interesting so it's very specific when it comes to being a singer i guess in the army i just didn't never would have thought about how that would work for for the army band and stuff yeah the army band any any instrument like they have they they're unless except for like the premier bands i think maybe there's one premier band that has strings but for the most part it's like brass woodwinds vocalist and rhythm section obviously like bass guitar piano um but yes you have to audition you have to send in like your first audition which is just like for me, it was like five songs, and the way they bracket like the different types of songs is very interesting, different than what I was used to. Um, but yeah, you send in like five songs and a resume, and then they, they will be like, uh, we need to see more, or no thanks. Um, and they had me, they were like, oh, we need more. So I sent more in. And I sent, and they were very much like, we can't tell because I'd sent in like footage from cruise ships. They were like, we can't tell if you can sing. I was like, okay, well then, all right. <laughs> it's a weird thing to say, but fine. Um, so I recorded like special. I rented studio space and I got my friends and I was like, let's just like play and, and I'll sing these songs and send it in. Let's do it upright if we're going to do it. And that was what sat on a desk for a year, I guess. Um, and then you go to maps to make sure you can even, like, if you pass that point, you go to maps to make sure if you could even be in or not, like, if they find out, you know, and then if you pass, it's like this weird balance where you have to do like your ASVAB and your, and your maps, and that has to be approved. And then you have like, what's called your AMPA, oh, Army Music Performance Assessment. Here comes Maybe. the acronyms. <laughs> oh man, everything. Yeah. Um, and because of COVID, usually you would do that in person, but because of COVID, it's still a live audition. Like my recruiter, a sound guy, and myself had to meet up and film it. And I couldn't like stop or anything. Like he had to be in the room and be like, she didn't stop. <laughs> she did this live. And pretend that there's an audience. It's very weird. And, you know, I'm used to, like, being in an audition room, but, like, I think the COVID issue and, like... And the fact that the Army... (laughs) Yes. The Army probably didn't make it easier. (laughs) No, it's very, like, the... It's it's a dichotomy of, like, musician and Army. Like, artist and Army. It's definitely a balance. Um, So then I did that, and I 
passed the audition and then I had to do my final maps. Well, they, then they're like, once you pass the audition, they're like, go swear in, go swear in, go swear in. You're going to basic training in a month, but swear in now. Um, and I think that's just because they want to know what they're getting. But yeah, and then I went to basic training October 6th. La uh, well, actually 2020, the year of the COVID. <clears throat> All right, so that's that. I didn't even think about that as a question. How was it going to basic training with COVID to deal with? Oh, it was annoying. <laughs> so they have, most people know there's like red, white, and blue phase. Yep. They've added a yellow phase, um, which is. Is that the COVID phase? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's like the quarantine phase. Oh, God. So. <laughs> that's which... terrible. It's so bad, and my recruiter had no idea what it would be. He was like, you need to take enough products for two weeks. And I was like, but I'm, like, taking a backpack. Like, how am I going to do this? But I did it. Like, I took, like, I was like, I'll wear one outfit and one PJs. He was like, yeah, you're going to be quarantined when you get there, and then they'll in-process you. Okay. Which is not what happened at all. Like, they immediately in-process you, and, like... <laughs> They made me throw away all of the products that oh, he yeah. told me to bring. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, he told me to. Oh, it was so annoying. I was, and I looked like such an idiot, like in that room at four in the morning, just like, can I get to sleep? Why are we? <laughs> this man is yelling at me for conditioning. Did, did, you get your, <laughs> did you get your half an hour of sleep? Did he put you guys to bed and then immediately wake you up? Or No, we oh. got... <laughs> Go upstairs, put your stuff down, and come back. Because <laughs> for us, like... it was we we w got in process. Uh, Would you go for basic training? Jackson, Fort Jackson. Jack okay, I went to Fort Benning, so um, not too far away. Uh, we got there, and I remember it was hilarious. We get there, we we do our in processing. They do the whole spiel and stuff in front of us. They tell us to tuck our shirts and all that stuff. We go upstairs. They this is your bunk. For, this is your bunk for reception. You know, we were there for two weeks because we got kind of stuck. There was a snowstorm, completely shut down Georgia, but. Half an inch of snow in Georgia just was like snow. Um, we don't know what this is, and I had to eat MREs <laughs> for a week because the they wouldn't let the uh, defect uh, staff go to work. But they uh, they were like, "All right, go to bed." And I swear to God, I, I I swear to me, I I shut my eyes and then immediately opened it, and the lights were back on. But it was a half an hour. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep for a half an hour. It was four o'clock. We woke up at four thirty, and like, all right, everyone out of bed. I was like, "Why?" Did I do this? Why yeah. did I do this? Why am I here? Ah, uh, it was yeah. Uh, that was an experience. So yeah. So I mean, I think that's a universal experience. But why am I in the military right now? This is <laughs> what have I done? What? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's awesome though. I that your dad did thirty-two years. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming he retired. Did you know? Went through that whole process, and I mean, thirty-two years is a long time to serve. Yeah, he he did like two years in the reserves. Two of those are reserve years. Um, and I don't know, like it was different than about how OCS worked and stuff. Like he still, he did a some kind of basic training and I don't know if it was called OCS, but it was definitely different. And he's a, he's a chaplain. So oh. there's no arms training for chaplains. So that's different because uh, chaplains aren't allowed to hold uh, the weapons. Um, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's what a chaplain's assistant is for. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, he just stayed in. Like, I remember the conversation of, like, he never thought he'd get promoted. So he always thought, like, after the 20 years, he was like, well, I'm not going to get picked up, so I'll just retire. And then he would always get picked up, so he would just stay in. Uh, and, yeah, he was, I mean, like, I I love my dad, obviously, and I'm biased, but... He's a very good chaplain, very good at what he did and cared a lot. And I think we need more of that. Like, of oh, yeah, chaplains, that really care. Yeah, chaplains are extremely important. I know that it's kind of a meme with the chaplain thing, because, you know, especially if you're in infantry, because it's like, for us, the chaplain is the guy that brought us Kool-Aid or Gatorade and like, you know, saltine crackers or something like that out in the field or something like that. That's always what I remember the chaplain. But chaplains are super important. I mean... It, they're definitely one of the most important jobs because if you need something, you're having issues. The chaplain's the first person you should go to, and uh, yeah. not to get too su super serious, but I think anyone out there that's listening, it's in. You know, if you have an issues, go to the chaplain first, have a conversation with them, and then go from there. But um, 
That's yeah. I, I just think that's amazing. Thirty-two years in the service. That's that's great. Especially as a chaplain, yeah. that makes it even better. I mean, that's that's crazy cool. Uh, so uh, what is your MOS by the way? Because I just didn't know what your MOS would be. Uh, forty-two Romeo. Uh, okay. so I'm in the like the forty-two series. I like which like a forty-two Alpha is HR. So that I think they consider us like helpers. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Tachés. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, 42 Romeo. And then like specifically like I'm a nine Victor, which is vocalist. Oh, okay. Um, but, that makes sense. Yeah. And if you're the like, so if you know about like the premiere bands that you see on TV and like that army band, that's a 42 Sierra. Oh. Um, so they're different. Uh, that's an uh, another audition, which I've, getting ready to do at the end of march oh, so that's, that's that's another thing where you send in like a packet and then they're like yes we'll see you uh so i'm going to do that and <laughs> i thought i would be done auditioning <laughs> no never uh yeah. cost it that's pretty cool i you know i i I love learning about different things in the, in the army and stuff. I think people focus too much on just the combat arms and stuff, and I like learning about you know all the other jobs out there. I mean, I I uh, my dad was a it doesn't technically exist as a job anymore. It got reclassified, I'm pretty sure, but it was a forty five kilo, which was tank turret mm -hmm. repairman, which is a fun name. He just oh, basically yeah. was a tank mechanic. He just worked on tanks, and he did that for three years. He went to Germany for six months. You know, it was a fun experience and stuff. Uh, but. You know, I, I when I was in the National Guard, I got I got voluntold to do uh, what is called case. It's like Seaburn. Oh, I'm gonna kill myself for not remembering this. It's a Seaburn Seaburn response team for hazmat mm -hmm. res for the Homeland Security uh, Response Force, and it was just this weird thing that they're like, all right, you're gonna go do this, and I ended up getting like hazmat certified and all this other stuff, and <laughs> completely separate from the infantry and. We we're just bodies. They were like, we need bodies. Connecticut was the state mm -hmm. that had it originally, and they're like, we don't want this anymore. We're passing it on to your state. So then the Vermont National Guard had to come down and train us on to do stuff because they were, like, I guess, the experts in it for us. And it's the, every, the whole country's split up into regions and stuff. It's pretty interesting. I do want to do an episode on it. I want to have someone that I know on, but they're they're not coming on. So hopefully they'll listen to this and come on. I can guilt trip them into coming on. Lots of pressure. <laughs> yeah, lots of pressure. Uh, they're really cool. <laughs> So they, they could add, you know, but anyways, so back to you. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so you're, you're part of eighth army, the eighth army mm -hmm. band. Um, yes. And you're stationed in South Korea, which yes, it's pretty cool. So, what, and, and yeah. that's a, that's what a two year commitment. Just or? a year. Just a year. Okay. Cause I'm unaccompanied. If I was accompanied or I had family, uh, and they came, yeah, they came with me. It would be two years. Oh, okay. uh, there's rumors that they're going to change that, though, and everybody's going to be two years. But there's always rumors, so who knows? I was going to say, it's the Army. It's the... Yeah. I mean, at least you guys, at least you got in when you have good uniforms. You got the good the good camel <laughs> uniforms, and you got yep. the pinks and greens now, which I'm super jealous that everyone gets to wear those, because I would have loved those. So I don't have those yet. I'm dreading paying for them, but... Uh, yeah, that's... Cause yeah. Like, um, but they look really nice. So. Oh, they look fantastic. When we did our infantry ball, I can just imagine what it would look like now with, you know, just all every, cause I know everyone would just ditch the ASU, you know, ASUs and just go straight for the pinks and greens, but. Oh, yes. Oh, it would have, it would They're going to be just giving look. the blues out at basic. That's going to be what you're getting those for until they run out. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know <laughs> it's, it, well, it's the same, you know, it's the same with the national guard. We may have gotten the new uniform. But all our gear is still in UCP, so we still look <laughs> yes. we look dumb. But you know it's all right. Um, <laughs> we just look like a ragtag group of guys, but guys and gals. But uh, but yeah, I think that's great. Um, the, I, I know I I watched um on the Eighth Army like, again. I did research into you. Sorry, but <laughs> 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 uh, I watched a video on Eighth Army about you talking about you know being in South Korea and why South Korea was on your list. You actually wanted to go to South Korea. And I think this is an awesome thing that you actually got to go yeah. to a place that you want to go. Cause not a lot of people in the army get to go to the place that was on their list. Right. Yes. I know that it's uh, lucky. Um, when you, the band, the way it works, so the most MOS is it's like, here, go here. Um, and I know you can fill out like a dream sheet, but as, yeah. as I don't know, like as far as it worked for my dad, like, we would joke that like the dream sheet was that they'd be like, okay, so not these places. Yeah, like, exactly. pick three. <laughs> Anywhere else? 
Fort Polk? Good. Yeah. Kansas? Oh, okay, thanks. Middle of nowhere? You're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the band, what they do is they're, uh, you ask for your choices, and they will send you what's available at your time of PCS. Um, they still ask you what you want, which is I think is really funny because they're, there's not even like pretending to take into consideration what you want. Like I asked for Hawaii, Colorado, and, and Bliss. No, and yes, Bliss. And they were like, all right, so you can have Jackson, Riley, or Syl. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, Syl, I guess, because I'm certainly not going back to Jackson so soon. Um, yeah, so it's not right. You tell me you didn't. Me this time. You tell me you didn't want to go to Fort Hood. <laughs> oh, I like. <laughs> they don't even offer me that. Could you imagine? They're like, your choices are Fort Hood, Fort Jackson, or Fort Campbell. I'd be like, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you either you either um, go to Fort Hood and you die, or you go. <laughs> My yeah. dad was actually Those stationed at Fort Hood, so it's funny that Fort Hood's become a meme to me. Because he's got yeah. fond memories we, of scorpions. Yes, we were there when I was in first grade, and it was fine. Well, obviously, when I was in first grade, and yeah, on the officer side, officer side is always different. Like I'm learning as from everything. I'm like, wow, everything is different than what I experienced growing up as like a, an officer's kid. Um, but yeah, when I, when I swore in the, the deal was they were like, go swear in. And then within 24 hours, you'll have your, your three choices. And my, they offered me Riley Bragg and South Korea. And I was like, oh, well, South Korea, i like, I've been trying to go to Asia forever. Um, and <laughs> the hope and the, the goal with coming over here and being here was to kind of see Asia. Uh, but COVID has <laughs> not made that possible. Yeah, so, COVID needs to just end already. We need to figure this thing out and get it done. Yes. I agree. I agree. I can see that. You definitely, uh, I went to Hawaii a couple years ago, and I can say Hawaii is uh, pretty amazing. I think everyone should yeah. take an opportunity to go to Hawaii at some point. But uh, yeah. One yeah. of our sergeants just got offered Hawaii, and like obviously Hawaii and like two other places, and he was like, I'm going to Hawaii. You don't even have to like complete the sentence. Hawaii, please. Although I do know like, it's infantry for hawaii apparently sucks because <laughs> it's it's like jungle well, it's like jungle swamp or not swamp but like jungle tropical training and they do a lot of just just a lot out in the out in the you know water training and stuff so at least that's what i've been told yeah because i think jungle yeah. warfare school is or was is i don't know if it's still a thing or was a thing or yeah, i'm pretty sure it's hawaii but i don't know i was national guard so we, schools weren't a thing we didn't you know <laughs> all right schools were a thing but like it's different <laughs> And I also wasn't yeah. exactly uh, the super soldier. I wasn't, you know, Captain America. I was just the average, ad average guy. I didn't, you know, but. Um, so uh, what is it like uh, living in South Korea? Well, you know, you, you were in South Korea when you were younger, so. Yeah, my dad was stationed here twice, both unaccompanied, but we did visit like when I was 13. So I did get to visit like uh, Korea when I was a kid. Um, which was amazing. And obviously, without, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, probably going to bring up COVID a lot. Without the like COVID That's restrictions, right. you know, being overseas is incredible. Like, I always want to travel and learn as much as I can about other people and, and other cultures and other countries. Um, but the, the restrictions have made that kind of difficult. And, and that's been really frustrating uh but you try to make the best of it it's really cool to like i've been to seoul a couple times and to kind of explore i went down to chunan like i this was a while ago this was like in the summer when it wasn't so cold um but i took like my bike uh all the way to chunan via like the train i was i felt like <laughs> i was like i'm just gonna figure this out because i want to be able to ride my bike on these beautiful bike paths and I, I went because I wanted, there's this bakery that I saw that looked really cool. And then while I was there, someone was like, oh, you should go. There's like the second largest Buddha in Korea is there or something. And I was like, great. So I looked it up on my cacao maps and I set, you know, set my bike GPS and I was like, great. So I'm going and it's like uphill and I'm like, 
goodness gracious, am I ever going to be biking downhill? Like, oh, this is awful, like the whole way. And then it dawns on me, I'm like, oh, they're always on like hilltops and mountaintops. Like, this is not going to get better. <laughs> like the whole way, I'm just like, oh, goodness. Hey, at uh, least your ruck marching worth... is going to be easier after that, right? <laughs> I just did a the Norwegian foot march last Friday, so like nine days ago or something. And it was 18.6 miles with 25 pounds on my back. <laughs> no, ruck marching never gets easier. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, I do I not enjoy it. <laughs> I'm glad that my unit but... was mechanized or motorized, I guess, technically. Because uh, ruck, ruck marching <laughs> for me. Ooh. Not exactly a tall dude, so. Ooh. Yeah. Tall guy's got it five easy. Two, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always mad at tall people. Like I was <laughs> like the twelve mile mark mark at this in this eighteen point six. I was just like, oh no, I might not make it. Like I am so tired, and I'm like just kind of trudging as fast as I can go. And um, and there's a time limit. Like we, if I had taken more than five hours, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't count. Um, so I was like, and I had slowed down a lot. I started running, like I ran a half mile, walked a half mile, ran a half mile, walked a half mile. And I did that for 12 miles. And then I was just like, I, I can't run anymore. I can't pick up my feet that fast. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to go as fast as I can. But these tall, like at one point, this like trio of tall Katusas just like saunter past me. They're just like, this is great. <laughs> just like, I hate you guys. Like... <laughs> You're just there, just stride. like talking to each other. Yeah, they're they're t they're covering you know double the ground with less less of you know less walk or less yes. movement. It's like ah, that always killed me. I, I always fell behind in that type of stuff. I just it's not good at rucking. You know, helps yep. your running though. <laughs> Definitely helps your running. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So all right, so I guess we'll move on to. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of kind of know the answer. I think I know the answer to this question. But what what is the greatest thing or things to happen to you so far? Oh my goodness! I want to know what you think the answer is because I'm not sure I know the answer. There's been some, <laughs> there's some been some really cool stuff. I got to do this really cool music video with the M and D band, uh, which was like a really cool experience. Um, yeah, that was amazing, um, and that was like in June or something. Um, and we've gotten to do some really cool performances and a lot of like, I think what's cool about being in South Korea as like a performer or like in the band is that you really get to do what one of the big things the band is for, which is like relations and relationships between like the, the two armies and the, and the people and the civilians and, and that kind of stuff to kind of create this image for, of the military, because like your average civilian isn't going to see the infantry working. You know, they're not going to see uh, tankers doing their thing unless they're watching, like, a video or something. But the band is going to go out into the community, and you're gonna, you're, they're going to get to meet soldiers. Um, and we don't, we don't do the same job, obviously, but, like, we're still soldiers. Like, I still went to basic. I still do, you know, 18.6-mile rucks. Um, <laughs> and, still wake you know, up at the so, crack, crack of dawn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like it's it's obviously a different job, but like it is it, the point of it is to create this like relationship and comfort with our our presence here and like knowing real people, like especially like South Koreans knowing Americans and and so getting to do like that music video with the M and D band um, was really cool because it it definitely like strengthen that relationship and and it was cool for me <laughs> obviously i was like oh it's amazing um and like our performances in the community have always been really meaningful um there have been less because of covid <laughs> um but yeah it's been a cool experience and uh, we had this and then on the other side of it like i think the band is a morale thing like providing morale to troops uh so i'm always the first to be like we need to be doing gigs for like the enlisted for like that's we need to do those like the the events and that kind of stuff um we do a lot of changes of command and that's important obviously like that like tradition and that is there as well of what we do uh 
but it it's always really cool and meaningful to do a concert for like the enlisted soldiers because they're they're just having a great time and you know i think like being able to go see live music is good for morale yeah it breaks up the monotony of just you know doing everything else so yeah i get that yeah totally yeah. i mean you know I, that i think the change of command yeah stand around and you know, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone finds oh. this fun but um yeah no yeah that uh, that was probably what I, I figured you were gonna say that was that was my guess but from just doing the research that i was looking in and stuff i, I think it's cool i think it's a hearts and mind kind of thing kind of approach you know to yeah because i know it, it sometimes uh things can be a little bit strained in the, the host nations and stuff that we uh happen to be in and stuff so i think i think it is a very important thing to not just see just a bunch you know because so especially with south korea where they're one of our most important allies in that region it's important to mm -hmm. build that relation and stuff i'm not going to get into foreign policy here but um yeah good relationships are always good like, like yeah we exactly <laughs> get along like i like i feel like it's funny that that's become like this weird like what would usually used to be like a Disney Channel, like just be nice to each other, like, and now it's divisive. People are like, "No, I won't be nice to people that disagree with me." Exactly. That's against my beliefs, and I'm like, "Goodness gracious, what?" Yeah, it, it's <laughs> funny because episode two we talk about uh, about you know Russia and Ukraine, and that's pretty much the story that me and Robert were talking about. And wait till next two weeks from now, you guys can watch that. But you know, we talk about the Ukraine-Russian thing, and hopefully they don't invade between now and then, because otherwise that whole conversation just won't make any sense. But, you know, that's what we yeah. basically came down to, is just being nice and not, you know, there's no... He's talking about how, like, you know, Romanians don't, for instance, don't hate Russians, and he, he knows Russians, and Russians don't hate Romanians, and it should be... Yeah, there's no reason to have all this, and, uh, I, you know, it's just... I don't know, it's tough looking at everything and going, ah, oh, man, you wish things could be better and you wish, you know, but I think from what you're saying, I think that's kind of, you guys are kind of doing that by, by having this connection with, with the, you know, the South Korean military and the people by building this, mm -hmm. this good relationship and, and not having it all just be, you know, negative. Cause you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things. I'm a very idealistic person. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm like, what? <laughs> Have you, seen, have you seen Mean Girls? You know the girl that's like, I just wish we could all bake a cake and yeah. made of rainbows. And like, I, I, I can be that person where I'm like, I just really don't understand why we can't just be nice. Like, what? Well, you're allowed to disagree with me. I mean, like, about stuff, but like, you can be nice. Like, exactly. You can be nicely disagreeing. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> that's that's cool though. Like I said, I, 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 it's just like I said. I was saying earlier. You know, I love learning about i think people focus a little too much on just combat mls's and i think there's so much more to the military and i think it's mm -hmm. it's it's fantastic the stuff that the military does the military does behind the scenes specifically all the people that make up all the mls's that you know the logistic mls's that keep things going and stuff they're so important to the mission mm -hmm. i don't want to get too big army on us but like it's <laughs> it's just Something I think gets overlooked a little bit too much and stuff. And that's coming from someone who, who I, I mean, I didn't even want to be infantry. I wanted to be a tanker, honestly. But when I went to the active duty recruiter and they were like, yeah, I don't have any options right now for that. I was like, okay, I'll think about it. And then, you know, a little while later, my buddy was like, I'm joining the National Guard. And I was like, okay, I'll meet the recruiter. And, and you, know, you know, next thing you know, I'm signing a six-year contract and stuff. He didn't join. I did. He didn't. Oh, um, he ended up not nice. getting in. I got in, and my but my recruiter was like, "Hey, you could go shoot tow missiles off and stuff." And I'm going to put you because the National Guard, you kind of get selected for unit because it's wherever the openings are. So he knew exactly yeah. where I was going. I was going to Delk Company and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I can do this." And what did I do? I went to the Delk Company, and the, that's why I trained for six, well, five years. I did tow missiles, and uh, I got the tow missile behind <laughs> me right there, and. <laughs> You know, uh, that big old thing. Yeah, big old thing is an empty tube. Um, Jeez. big, yeah, and and that I'm not gonna lie. As much as I uh, sometimes wish I did a shorter contract. Um, man, I miss going to that range. We used to go to Fort Dix in New Jersey, and mm -hmm. uh, 59. I'm never gonna forget the range, 59 Charlie, and we'd fire off tow missiles. And you ever get an opportunity? Ever anyone ever says, "Hey, you want to fire off tow missile?" Just say yes. 
Yeah. It's it's one hundred percent. Thank you. <laughs> it's a well, yeah. It's amazing. We got the train. Our unit was like the 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 unit for the tow missile. Like uh, most leaders don't know how to use it. Don't know how to, don't know how to employ it. So we it just kind of gets it's it, it's old. They're like it's from the seventies. It's old. We don't need it anymore. We got javelins and stuff. And we used to get the top. We used to get the first unit to get the upgrades and uh, like ah oh, man, I miss that stuff. Never going back, but I miss it. Um. <laughs> So more, that's enough about my experiences because I could go on and on and on and on. One day I will do an episode talking about this stuff. I'm, we'll see. Um, so is there anything bad? I have to ask. Is there anything bad that's happened since you joined the army? Well, other than other than COVID. Other than COVID. Other than COVID. COVID is obviously just bad all around. But Yeah. Uh, I mean, basic training was awful. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. The thing about what I think people don't understand about basic training is that okay sure it's physically demanding but it's not that physically demanding what's annoying about basic training is being around 18 year old idiots who just want to fight with a drill sergeant and i'm doing push-ups because of it i'm just like uh, yeah so please i don't want to, you don't have to say your age but i'm assuming there was a good enough age gap when you went to basic training compared to the raw <laughs> recruits that like you know we had we had yes. someone in ours that was like 34 and he was just like no. Yeah. No. Please stop. Like everybody is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's what yeah. it feels like. You're just like. It's like just what? just do what you gotta do, and then it's over. And people are like, no, no, no. I'm gonna make as much problems as I can, and everyone else yeah. has to suffer. And you're like, oh. yeah. That's a lesson to like... anyone listen to this. Don't be that guy. Yeah, because you're the worst. <laughs> like, and it. And you're not cool. Like that's the other thing. I'm like, you're not cool for fighting with the drill sergeant. You just look like a like a brat. Like, Ex yeah. Nobody yeah. thinks you're really cool. It's Especially so when bizarre. Especially doing push-ups or you're doing V-ups or squats or half jacks or, you know, whatever. And and your walls are sweating in the in the bay because you guys have been doing it for so long. That's an experience. Is when the wall starts to sweat from the condensation yeah. building. Up for, that's that's when you know you, you messed up. <laughs> Or somebody messed up. Yeah. I was usually just in the room, like, why? <laughs> exactly, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I went when I was 20, so I was a little, I wasn't that much older than everyone else, but I at least had worked a job for a couple of years, and I had a little, I went to college, dropped out, did all that stuff, so I was at least a little bit experienced and stuff, and, and I was just like, this isn't hard. Just <laughs> following directions. The PT stuff was hard for me. I'm not a physically fit dude, but, like, the following instructions part, I could do that all day long. Right. <laughs> The... Like, literally, all you have to do is shut your brain off. Like, basic training is not about, like, doing anything but, but doing it. Like, that's what they're teaching you is to do what you're told and to, like, they're trying to give you, like, little samples of things you might do when you're in. Like, it's very basic. Like, it's in the title. But these kids will be like, I like when we get smoked because it's good for me to learn the discipline. I'm like, dude, that's not discipline. You know what discipline is? Shut your mouth. Shut up. <laughs> like, you're confused about your definitions. Well, you always have that one guy that's like, I like eating smoke because I like the workout. And everyone else is like, oh, you know. Yeah. So go work out. <laughs> yeah, like, go work out. You got time at the end of the day. Come on. Yeah. Uh, well, you'd have more time if you would stop getting smoked. We and actually have to say, workout. as an infantry... I, I know there's probably people out there that, that someone will eventually listen to this that I went to basic and be like, that guy is a piece of crap. But I didn't have <laughs> that bad of a time at basic. I mean, again, I, I physically I'm, I'm bad. But like as far as getting smoked, our drill sergeant was pretty much checked out and mm. he just was chill. We basically had three chill drill sergeants. They're really cool, really chill dudes. They gave us what we needed to know. And it, we didn't get smoked often. Uh, red phase, yes, but we got out of red phase pretty quickly, and it was just like you know, all behind us at that point. So yeah, we didn't. We got smoked. Well, I was in this platoon that like was understaffed, and the main senior drill sergeant. Um, I will never. I think he's the worst man I've ever met in my life. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh no, you're a bad person because you can see the other platoons, and you're like, oh, that's what a drill sergeant's supposed to be. And our drill sergeant, I was just like. No, you're just like an absent father who comes in. I used to say, 
he reminded me of the beast because he would enter a room and the walls would shake like because he slammed the door so hard and then he would just yell and leave and then like i was just like like never around he was like i'm trying to get drill sergeant of the year so i'm never here i was like yeah okay well fine <laughs> That, that doesn't sounds, make any sense. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds so counter, you know, trying to make drill sergeant of the year, but I'm not going to be around drill sergeant. I just, what? and some of like, I, he was very like demeaning to anybody that was older. Like if he found out you were like older than him, which I was, um, and am, I guess forever. Um, he would really give you a hard time. Like people that weren't in his platoon um he would just he didn't understand it and he would be really crappy about it and i managed to like slide under that radar until <laughs> uh right before graduation where somebody uh he was getting ready to decide who to send up for like soldier of the whatever it is i don't remember i went to the you know like i'm here before the president of the board blah 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 soldier of the cycle or whatever it's called yeah, i can't remember yeah. and he calls in like me and my friend beers who were like we were battle buddies and she was like closer to my age but younger and she the drill sergeant calls her into the office and he's like beers who's smarter you or simmons and she was like i mean i don't know we're <laughs> maybe her she's older i don't know and he was like what because he knew how old she was he was like simmons get the f in here and i was like oh no like simmons how the f old are you and i told him and he was like what's that like he just starts yelling and he's like why do you act like you're like 19 and i was like i, I mean i don't like i act a little spacey because i am naturally spacey but also i did not want you to know i was older because i have seen you literally scream at someone for being over 30 I'm like <laughs> what is your problem <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I will say when you're in the military, you learn quickly who's a good leader and who isn't a good leader. It it almost it's becomes just... a skill. Yeah, like, you just look at someone, you're like, oh no, this is bad. This is <laughs> yeah, really and bad. You just give them the wide like berth. You're like, I'm not walking over there. <laughs> like... Oh yeah, yeah. Staying on the radar is the is the key to survival in the military. I mean, what's I mean. <laughs> You got lucky. You started off as an E4. Uh, I got the, the joy of starting off as an E2. And I skipped because <laughs> of this. Our guard has that, like, I don't know if the Army Active has it too, but it's that you have two friends refer you and you get E2 thing. I forget what it was called, but mm. yeah, it's this thing. Um, and, uh, but when you have E4, get that sham shield, you know, you can E4 <laughs> Mafia. But uh, well, everybody in the band has uh, is an E4. It's a oh. civilian acquired skill. Like you don't have to have the degree in yeah. the band. Like uh, it's because they assume most of us do have degrees. Um, but it's a civilian acquired skill. So we're all E4s, except for people that are above us. So in the band, it's not. It's oh, it nice doesn't really because... help you guys out that much. So you can't sham out of things. I mean, we we can, but. <laughs> It's just us. You're going to find me. I'm like in charge of my in charge of my uh, shop right now. It's in the band field. You have like it's a self-contained unit. So like we we have to do our own ops and our own HR and our own uh, PAO um, as well as do the band job. So it's like having two MOSs uh, and I'm in PAO right now and everybody's on leave. So I'm just like in charge. <laughs> I'm like, how do I get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. I didn't even think about that. The structure and organization and stuff, and how it would differ just based on, you know, yeah. how, what I'm used to. And it, you know, we're just fire team and squad with the squad. And our squad, my squad was eight people. So or my platoon yeah. start. My sorry, my platoon was ten people, plus like three sergeants. Wow. Because we were we were motorized heavy weapons company, so we didn't have. We we had like a company of like seventy dudes. That was it. Uh, include oh. that includes sergeants, officers, our staff sergeant. I mean, our uh, supply sergeant. Who's we had, we had a lot of good su supply sergeants over the year. Um, shout out to all the great supply sergeants that we had. Yes. Um, yes. Go supply. Yeah. Thanks it, for the free pens. Yeah, it, we had some good <laughs> ones. Uh, but um, so it it's I didn't even think about that organization. That's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. The whole. <laughs> I didn't even think about the everyone being an E4 and you guys all that's you know 
that's just uh that's interesting i don't know i'm jealous because being an e2 and an e3 for so long just uh you just yeah. keep standing there and someone's like you you're gonna go do this i cleaned a lot of <laughs> bathrooms yeah yeah so <laughs> we do it as a group we have our like clean day on thursday you clean yeah. every day but on thursday it's like deep clean deep clean yeah and yeah, i we... try really hard to have class or something on thursday <laughs> yeah yeah shannon I'm really there you go. sorry yeah, yeah. exactly good at it. uh yeah we we did it at the end of every drill you know one week in a month and it would just be clean time and it would all we'd, it basically would be waiting for the final meeting with the officers and the uh sergeants to get done and then we would clean in the meantime and it was always like all right this group's doing the bathrooms and you know because we we maintain our armory you know for ourselves not you know we had a there was a day guy that worked during the week the contractor i don't know really what he did Nothing against him. Came in them. and moved stuff around. And... Yeah, nothing against the guy. I just don't remember I I, what he could have did because we did all the cleaning. I mean, I guess during the week that we had uh, active guard, uh, AGR, you know, the guys that uh, are readiness NCO, supply sergeant was active guard. So they were in the armory all the time. They did full-time job there plus the weekends. So uh, mm -hmm. if, you're in the, if you're in the guard and you want to go full-time, that is an option. It's harder to get, but just throwing that out to yeah. people. I'm always going to plug the, the guard. Um, <laughs> if you want to join the military, I'm serious. If you want to join the military and you don't want to go anywhere and you want to serve your community, the National Guard's the way to go. Just be ready yeah. for a lot of dumb stuff to happen. Uh, well, that's true in any branch. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, in any. You get you get state active duty, it can get a little weird. Uh, sometimes you don't get paid. Sometimes it takes six months to get paid. It's only $100 hmm. a day. So, uh, yeah, it's... I make more money at my job. It's a funny, it's a common meme of you make more money in your day job than you do in the guard a lot. A lot of guys are in the guard. There's a great page out yeah. there, Friday Guard. Everyone should go follow Friday Guard on Instagram, just saying. <laughs> um, but anyways, well, I think we're going to wrap this up. I think we've gotten a pretty good amount of time out of here. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, so uh, real quick, what what is your future plans? Are you going to stay in? Are you going to... You're going to retire to do, do 30, 25, 40 years? I have no clue, actually. I I don't know. I Part of me is like, uh, yeah, I should stay in. Like, this is great. Like, I get to be a singer um, and I, you know, get to travel and I should stay in. Uh, and then uh, there's another part of me that's like, I literally can't live in the barracks <laughs> for like... 10 years which because as a specialist an unmarried specialist even though i am older i like i have to live in the barracks um and i don't like it <laughs> so um and we don't promote fast in the band field they keep uh the band field is shrinking so that means there's less slots at the top and most of them are already filled so we just don't promote very fast so like it best <laughs> And depending on what happens with the ACFT and and all and like our fitness testing and stuff, like it's just going to be an interesting road to get to E six, which is what you have to be to uh, live off base if you're not married. Um, and I'm not sure I can handle <laughs> living in the barracks until I get to E six, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I can understand. And then that. of course, yeah, there's the hope, like the option of getting forty two Sierra because that's uh. Premier Band starts at E6, so that's their um, that's their PV2. You know, like that's their specialist. Depending, like once a Premier Band starts at E, they start at E6, so that would be an automatic promotion and, and a lot more freedom and that kind of stuff and uh, more stable. I am kind of at the point where I would like to stop moving around so much. <laughs> yeah, I um, that. Yeah. So there's different. I've thought about like going reserves and like picking somewhere I want to be and be like. Oh, I think I'll go do the reserves in uh actually contacted the one in LA and they were like, Yeah, sure. Let us know when you're getting out. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I literally don't know. I think about it every day. I'm like, can I do this? It's so. always the National Guard too, instead of the reserves. Just say National Guard gets better budget than the reserves. I don't know how oh. the National Guard band works, but you know, you know, just something to keep uh, in mind. I have friends in the National Guard band, uh well, in New York, and they they like it. Um I don't really know how the differences work, but I do hear good things about. Yeah, usually National the Guard. Guard gets just a little bit better budget because you're getting kind of a federal budget and a state budget. The reserves, from my understanding, and this is nothing against the reserves, it's just what I've been told from people I know in the reserves, is that 
you kind of don't get a lot of money. So yeah, it might not matter for band as much. It's just uh, for I think like, it does. <laughs> it probably does. We're gonna be yeah. the first one that they're like, y'all don't need it. Like yeah, see it. We're very visible, and they're like, what are we paying you for? Like every any like uh non forty two series or anybody that's like not in the band is like, why are we paying them? Like they literally don't know what we do. So we are like the first. They're like, you don't need that. We'll cut it there. Cut the band. Cut the band. Like, Band's okay. Gone. See you later. Because <laughs> so, I can tell you, in the National Guard, my unit, uh, you know, when I went to basic, they're like, oh, you're in the National Guard. Because they, they used to make fun of us all the time. Like, you National Guard guys, you guys aren't going to see crap. You're going to get the, the worst equipment. It's going to be hilarious. I get to my unit, and we have we have all the new equipment. We got, Like I said, we got the new tow system. We had the upgraded 50 cows. We had the uh, 240 Limas. And we also got the... Within three years, I had the upgraded M4 platform, the M4A1 Plus platform. So, with full auto and all that stuff. So, we got all that stuff. Rebuild weapons and, uh, I mean, the only thing we didn't have was body armor. Body armor is something that in the National Guard you just, you would never see unless you're on a, like, an explosive range. And it was always old oh. body armor. Um, but. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was like brand new, but it was like from 2008. <laughs> so, it was just like they ripped off the plastic and they're like, here you go. Um, unless you were deploying, if you were deploying, they gave you Gen Four IOTVs and stuff, so you got the cool guy stuff. But like those were those were like the holy grail for the you know you'd only see that if you're going somewhere. So because yeah. I remember uh, guys were going to Africa for like a QRF mission, and and I was they, they were getting all their gear, and I was like, oh man, they get all the fun stuff. They even got <laughs> boonies. They gave them boonies. I wish boonies were more common in the military. I love boonies. Like, give me. Me. <laughs> but, I hate the PC. I'm not a big fan of the PC. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't. It never looks good on my head. I don't know. I'm just not really a hat guy. But better than the beret. <laughs> oh yeah, don't get me started on the beret. The beret is the <laughs> worst thing the milit the army's ever done. It. No one can get them right. We spent like two days in ours. You had to shave them. Oh yeah. You know, I don't think we realize you have to shave your beret. Like you have to That's literally so take a sh it. Just shave it. Just it, it, and then you have to form it. You got to get it wet. You got to form it. There's like cardboard in the front, and it, you know, it's, and then you have to <laughs> fold it a certain way so that way you maintain the shape. It's a it's a nightmare. Yeah, I lost and they my beret like, at one basic point. Training to do it. Yeah, I well, lost they my beret like... and I had to make a new one. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, like no, please. Everybody keeps telling me I need to get a like another beret because mine is obviously very old and from basic and i'm like i'm not shaping one of these again so this is what i'm wearing this is what it's gonna look like, like. yeah exactly because we're yeah. always <laughs> like no they're the worst i hate them other nations but... berets look fine i don't know we just don't know how to do berets in the united states i mean it was the weirdest decision i was just like what are we doing and my dad was in when it was like the always hat like for a little while it was like it was what they wore and that was like I think during, like, the Bush administration when we were all, you know, like, having freedom fries instead of french fries. So I was like, why are we putting this French hat on our soldiers if we just... <laughs> the freedom hat, I'll have you know. Um, <laughs> I could tell you, it wasn't even a... a when, it, when they made that change, I could tell you, a lot of the other units didn't agree with... You know, yet Airborne didn't agree with it because, mm. you know... Oh, yeah, Air Beret, like, that's our hat. Yeah, Rangers didn't agree with it. You know, Special Forces didn't agree with it. All these other, you know, forces, you know, units that use the beret as a signifier and stuff. I mean, it's like the blue cord for the infantry. You know, we have our, we have our mm -hmm. blue cord. It's, it's how people know who we are. And uh, I think our artillery's red, and I forget the other ones, but, you know... Yeah. I was more interested, and we have a French forager on our, our dress uniforms from, the, from World War I, because my unit goes back to... You know, the national, you know, twenty sixth infantry division served in World War One, and we got a French mm -hmm. forage for helping the French and stuff. And now it's now it's permanently part of it. I think that's cool, but yeah, you know, those I, are cool. That's sacrilege to say that because Blue Cord is like the biggest thing. But um, yeah. So I I I, I understand uh, about the not knowing. I just wanted to ask that question because I think it's it's yeah. a good question to ask because you know everyone always has that that moment. They're like, I could stay in. Wait a minute. <laughs> And then reality <laughs> yep. slaps them. Um, so thanks for coming on, by the way. I really appreciate Absolutely. this. You got the, thanks for reaching out. You got the first episode of season two, first episode of video. Uh, although I oh, recorded cool. another episode before this, but you know. Um, <laughs> so uh, where can people uh, find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at 
Brittany underscore D underscore Simmons. I know it's long, but I just don't have any better options, but that's my Instagram handle. I'm on YouTube. It's always the same. I try to have everything streamlined. So if you search my name on any platform, that's it's Brittany D Simmons. That's always how you find me. Yeah. And I will link that if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, um, like, yeah, go find it, Google it. But if you're on YouTube, <laughs> you could find it directly in the description. Um, so like I said, thanks for coming on. And uh, oh, if, if you want to come back, you the invitation is always open. Uh, oh, yeah. Tons of things. Absolutely. This about. has been really fun. So so, like, <laughs> so when you have a lull in guests, just send me, hey, you want to answer these questions? And I'll be like, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So you're going to be on uh, six, seven times this year. No. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hopefully I get more guests. The last year was a little <laughs> a little rough on the guests. I apologize to everyone who thought I was gonna have more episodes. I missed my goal by a lot. Um okay, so everyone have a I don't know how to end this, so I'm just gonna say bye. <laughs>